Okay, hi everyone. So my name is Fernando Pena. Um, I'm an assistant director of admissions at the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. So thank you for joining us today. And I'm gonna be talking to you about applying to graduate programs in the field of communication and journalism. Um, and then I'm gonna be joined by my colleague a little later on in the presentation, Dr. Angela McCracken, who will tell us a little bit more about USC and more of our offerings on our campus. So we have a couple of objectives for today's presentation. Um, and the first one is to develop an understanding of communication and journalism, which I think is really, really important when you're thinking about the kind of programs that you want to, that you want to apply to. Um, you really have to know what, what they do, where they will take you, I think is even more important. Um, I'm going to share with you a couple of different types of de degree programs. So the different types of degree programs in communication or journalism, or even some other fields within the field of communication. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about prepping for the actual application, what you need to do, um, and some tips or suggestions from me. Um, and then again, like I mentioned, we'll talk a little bit more about USC, um, and then we'll open it up for questions. Okay. So I think one of the most important questions that you need to ask yourself when you're applying to graduate school in general, um, any the field, whatever it is, is what is your end goal? And I think that is something that you really need to ask yourself because there are so many types of different programs, so many different types of degrees that can lead you anywhere, so many different types of universities. You really need to ask yourself, what do you want? What do I want from this program? What do I want to do? Where will it take me? Um, what I have to do to get there? And I think that's something, that's a question that we should all hold in our heads while we go through this presentation. Um, a lot of what we do and how we learn about communication and what people ask me always has kind of the, the big question, what is communication? Um, and it's very broad, very broad. Um, and I think there's more questions to consider. What is the study of communication? What do you do with communication degree? Um, what does it encompass? Is it communication or communications? And like I put that it's silly, but it's true. You're going to see it so many spelled so many different ways. Um, and people are going to tell you that there are a lot of different degree programs or, or just fields that it encompass. And you really need to ask yourselves again, what do you want to do? after you graduate, after you're done in the field of communication? And is this the program that's taking you to that? And again, defining that I think is critical. Um, and I think one important thing to know is that universities define the study differently. So some use a broad range of disciplines that fall within that study. Some are more technical or more um, professionally based so you really need to understand and some are really theory based and I'm going to give you a couple of examples so for example so here are some university definitions of the study of communication so USC so our graduate programs combine an emphasis on communication theory and research methods along with new technologies policy implications and practical implications okay so that's not that broad but it does give you some actual definition of what the program and the coursework will entail right so it'll entail new technologies policy research which is really important but also practical applications what does that mean you know when you start applying to jobs how can you apply this degree program this degree that you just got to your jobs so the university of california at Santa Barbara, this is their definition. So our mission is to provide theoretically motivated, innovative, and rigorous research, teaching, and service. So we help students, researchers, and professionals understand how communication is developed, interpreted, and exchanged to inform, influence, and connect across a wide range of social contexts and cultures. What does that mean? It's long, right? But it's talking about, and it's different from that, because that's talking about practical applications. This one is not. This is a research university. So mostly it's tailored towards that research part. And then we have another example, Stanford. So the Department of Communication at Stanford University engages in research in communication and offers curricula 
leading to the BA, MA, and PhD degrees. So the MA degree prepares students for careers in journalism. And the PhD degree leads to careers in teaching and research related specialties. So this is really specific. The Stanford MA in communication will lead you to journalism. Okay, so it's very different, like I mentioned, and it's important that you look at the definitions of what communication is because again, they can be very broad, they can be very specific, and it's all about that end question, right? What do you wanna do and what is your end goal? What do you wanna get out of this degree program? Okay, now we mentioned communication encompasses a range of topics. So for from human communication to mass media, um, communication research also examines how messages are interpreted through cultural, um, gender, social, and or political dimensions and their context. So it's even broader. Um, and disciplines, and this is something that a lot of people don't know or sometimes they don't understand, that a lot of these disciplines may fall within communication. But people don't know that right because they think sometimes they might think it's really scary and it's all theory but it's not so it could be marketing it could be social media it could be public diplomacy it could be gender roles film music management global communication or public relations so any of those fields any of these emphasis fall within the study of communication so again it's up to your degree program and the university that you're applying to to see what it can give you okay what can we get out of these um, now there are several types of degree programs and there's a zillion of them in whatever field that you want to go into and not only that there are some traditional ones but universities also can create their own they define their own degree programs um, here i give you some examples of some um, traditional ones so the phd which is a research oriented degree okay it usually takes usually takes four to five years um, and most large well-endowed universities um, will fully fund their students, okay, USC being one of them. Um, and that's something to remember. It's about research. It's about being a scholar, being producing this research and new, um, um, new technologies, new whatever it may be uh, within your research, but it's generally tailored towards research and working really closely with the faculty. Um, now we have a Master of Arts. So that's traditional Master of Arts. Uh, usually takes two years, so a two-year program, and it ends with a thesis paper or um, some sort of concept conceptual project, whatever it may be. Um, but it, again, it usually takes about two years, which is what we see a lot in communication. Um, so those are oriented toward professional goals and training. Okay, again, oriented towards professional goals and training. So Master of Communication Management. Okay, that's not a traditional program. Um, we have a Master of Science in Digital Social Media. Okay, that's different too. That's not a traditional program. And there's just too many of them to list. Uh, because universities have their own degrees, they have their own specializations, um, and they can create one depending on the need and you know however the field is changing. But again, there's several of them. Master of Communication Management, Master of Science and Digital Social Media are examples of different types of professional degrees in communication because they will lead you to a specific um, skill set that you may not have. So again, going back to that question that I posed in the beginning of the presentation, um, what is my end goal? Okay, is it a traditional program where you wanna do research, where you wanna work with faculty, where you wanna write, um, or more of a professional degree? Something that'll give me a master of science in digital social media, okay, or communication management. Whatever it may be, there are several options. Okay, now, um, I think one of the most important things to consider when we're talking about graduate school is fit. And it's fit for you, but also fit for us. And how do you find the right program? Okay, there's a zillion of them, and I just gave you a lot 
of information. So I always tell students, these are my recommendations to you. Um, number one is review coursework. That's really, really important. And I feel a lot of people don't do that. What will I be doing in this program? Um, what kind of classes would I'm going to be taking? I think that's number one. Like, what am I not only going to be learning, but what are the classes that are going to teach me this? Um, and universities have all of that posted in their general catalog, so or their course catalog. So if you go online on their website, you can download that. And I'm giving you an example from USC, so from Annenberg. So Communication 310, so it's titled Media and Society, and it's four units. So it's the interplay between media and society, including family and children's socialization, um, intergroup relations and community and community, pornography and violence, gender and race, media ethics, and conduct of politics. Okay, I think that's an awesome class. It sounds like it. Uh, but that's exactly why you want to read the catalog and you want to see what kind of coursework you will be taking. Um, and that's my number one recommendation for everybody. This is how you find the right fit. Because again, when you're thinking to yourself, oh, I want to get this type of degree to do this. Well, this is how you find out if you're going to be getting that training or not. So be it research or be it professional program training, whatever it may be. And then another recommendation is review the faculty. I think that's critical. You want to see who will be teaching you. So universities, some universities have world-renowned professors in the field, just like USC does. Um, and you really want to learn from them and see what they can teach you and what you can do in the classroom together. See if you can partner with them on a publication, on a project, on whatever it may be. Reviewing this faculty list is critical. And that's why I chose my master's degree program, because I saw the faculty and I realized that these are leaders in the field um, and I want to learn from them directly. And then after that, you definitely want to visit. You want to visit and meet the faculty, um, the big events, sign up for any information sessions that the university might conduct. Now, we kind of talked about communication. Um, and then just within that, the idea of, or the journalism program is also something that's very, very different and tailored very different. So journalism is a professionally oriented degree program. It will provide you specific skills, okay? And that's something that you need to understand. It's very different, okay? Now, I think when students are interested in journalism, I always tell them, you need to know your background. Do you already have a journalism skill set? Okay, do you need a master's for it? Okay, some students might do a bachelor's in journalism. Do you need to go for a master's for it? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. Do you need a master's for journalism if you've never had any type of experience or if you have a lot? So those are questions that you should consider. Um, journalism is a changing field. Is a program you want converged or are there silos? Okay, what does that mean? So converged journalism is what USC does is um, we don't believe in silos. So we don't believe in the fact that there's print journalism, that there's broadcast journalism, and that they're very separate. Um, we want all of them together. We want print, digital, broadcast, all of those in a converged space. Okay, that's the Annenberg way. Because we think that you need to become a multimedia journalist. That's the best skill set for you. So you need to ask yourself that question when you start thinking about programs in journalism. Okay, so types of degree programs. So we do have, we mentioned earlier, uh, a ma traditional masters. So traditional masters of arts. So again, usually two year programs um, that end with a thesis or a paper. Um, there are some programs like that in journalism. Um, more programs though, are looking into the one year model. Um, and we have some of those at USC too. Um, and then a lot of them offer professional degrees. So an MS in journalism as opposed to an MA in journalism. So again, that difference in between more practical training as opposed to more writing or more theoretical work. Um, and then there are also specialized programs. So some that might tailor to athletics. Um, some that might tailor to politics. It depends. You have to do your research and see which programs you might be able to do. For example, Annenberg has two specialized programs, so specialized journalism in the arts and then specialized journalism, which is more of a broad 
type of degree program that you can tailor to whichever other field you would like. Now, when it comes to journalism, how do you find the right program? Okay, so again, if you want to be very broad, if you want to learn converged journalism, or maybe you want to be really specific, how do you find that right program? The, again, the idea of reviewing that coursework. So university general catalogs are an excellent source. Like I mentioned to you and I gave you an example of an actual course description. Um, I think one thing that is very critical in journalism is student media outlet support. You have to have that in your program. And what I mean by that is that your program can have actual media outlets within your university that can give you this skill set and teach you this skill set while you're learning from your academic program. Okay, so you're learning the best of both worlds at the same time. So academics plus professional, and you're gaining your professional skill set from the media outlets. Okay. Now, and I'll give you some examples of media outlets in a couple of minutes. Um, and again, review the faculty background. Again, that's very, very critical. Um, where did they work, especially in journalism? Like I mentioned, it's a professionally oriented degree. Where did your faculty members work? Did they work at ABC? Did they work at Univision? Did they work at CNN? Whatever, where did they work? Okay, where are their alumni coming from? Okay, that's huge. A lot of the Annenberg professors, for example, are Emmy Award winning journalists or Pulitzer Prize winning journalists. Those are the kind of people that you want to learn from that will teach you their own skill set. And again, visit, meet the faculty, sign up for information. Um, but aside from student media outlet support and knowing that you have student organizations that can help you in journalism, facilities are incredibly important. Um, you want to make sure that you're learning from state-of-the-art facilities, okay? And I have a picture of the new Wallace Annenberg Hall at the USC campus, which again, this is a converged digital media space. So this is our media center. Um, and all around it is our media outlets. So again, that idea of converged journalism, we do not have silos. The ATVN students that work for the television network, the radio network, the print, they all work within this one space. Okay, so facilities are really important in your journalism training. Okay, so now we can shift a little bit now that we talked about actual communication and journalism and talking about preparing for the application um, and um, I think one of the first things that I always tell students be it their international or domestic or whatever it may be is that you have to review all the information on the website before you even call the admissions office really take your time reviewing all of that believe me it's there trust me it's there your question is on the website but before you call, always review it and make sure that you have up-to-date information. Um, you want to download and print any application guidelines that are offered because sometimes requirements are different for international students um, or they might require another writing sample or whatever it may be. Okay, you want to complete testing before the deadline. You want to give yourself enough time, especially as an international student. You want to take the TOEFL, the IELTS, whatever it may be, the GRE. I've taken the GRE before, so you really have to take your time um, and how you prepare for that. Um, and, um, and, just, and you have to consider application deadline. So for example, let's say the application deadline is in December and you're taking the GRE in November, well, the GRE doesn't give you a lot of times or a lot of, ten, a lot of time to you to take it again. So for example, if you take it in November, you didn't do so great. Um, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can take it again. But then if you do that, you might miss the application deadline. So you have to consider all of that um, when you're thinking about applying. So some programs may require a writing sample aside from your statement of purpose. So you have to give yourself enough time to prepare that. If you don't have a writing sample from your undergraduate work um, and you have to come up with one or you have to show a professional writing piece, whatever it may be, you have enough time to do that. Okay, so keep, keep an eye on that. Um, you want to gather 
strong letters of recommendation and emphasis on strong letters of recommendation. A lot of these programs, you have to remember when you apply, faculty committees are involved in the actual decision process. So it's not people like me. So it's an actual faculty member that will be reading your application and deciding if you should be admitted or not. So you want to get strong letters of recommendation from professors or even professional workers or colleagues that you may have. Um, and then you want to look at finances and you have give yourself enough time to ask any questions um, before you apply or decide to come. Okay, so I'm going to invite my colleague Angela up to the stage <laughs> and she's going to share a little bit more about USC and then I'll take it again for Annenberg. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Angela McCracken. I'm the director of the USC office in Mexico City. USC is a large private research university located in Los Angeles, California. So we have eight international offices in Mexico, Brazil, China, Taiwan, and Korea, and India. And we support the global mission of the university. Uh, for example, we in uh, our guests like Fernando Pena to come talk about communications and journalism programs. Um, and we also bring students from this region to USC. We work with researchers who work in our regions or student programs in our regions. So I get to learn a lot about the whole university. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit about that because USC is not very well known in Mexico. Um, but it's, it's the largest private university on the west coast of the United States. So we have about 40,000 students. Uh, about 20,000 of them are graduate students. So the majority of students are master students, and there's a small portion of those are uh, PhD students. Um, and it's, it's large in terms of the number, 40,000 students, but it's also large in terms of the range of, of areas of study. So we have a school of medicine that administers four different hospitals, including cancer, a general ho two general hospitals, and a pediatric hospital in Los Angeles. Um, we have uh, the oldest school of gerontology, working with the aging population. We have an engineering school, the largest engineering school in the United States, a large business school, one of the best communication schools, and everything in between. So science, arts, theater, music, uh, cinema, dance, architecture, fine arts. Um, so all of these programs, there's 18 different schools and a, and a college of letters, arts, and science, creates an, an environment of a broad dis interdisciplinary study or activities. And that's really encouraged on the campus and in the programs. So for example, new programs will be developed between um, engineering and the medical school in biomedical devices. Um, it creates that uh, environment for entrepreneurship and innovation in various areas. So it's a private university as well. So all the programs are pretty small. The classrooms are small, but there's a broad range of programs. That's why we can have a very large university. Um, and it's located about 10 minutes from downtown Los Angeles, which um, is the economic center of California. California, if it were uh, an economy, would be the eighth largest economy in the world. So when you think about Los Angeles, you think it's not only a multicultural mega city, but it's also an economic center. It's a very important economic center of many industries, uh, not least of which is media and entertainment, Hollywood and all the media that goes around it, which is one of the reasons that the Annenberg School for Communication is a good place to study anything to do with media and entertainment. Because the university is right in Los Angeles and we have a long history of working with Los Angeles in industry and our graduates work in Los Angeles. You have 
um, unlimited opportunities to practice your profession, to learn your profession in Los Angeles. And then we also have our network of international offices and our network of alumni all over the world. USC has more international students than any other US university for 12 years in a row. So remember, we're a large university. We also have more international students than any other university. So our global network of alumni is one of the largest networks of alumni, and it's all over the world. Um, we have students from over 110 countries at USC. So we hear 100 languages spoken on campus. 91 religions are practiced on campus. It's a very diverse, multicultural environment like LA. And when you graduate, one of the most important things about going to USC is joining what we call the Trojan family and joining this large network of, of alumni all over the world, which is also important for your career after you graduate. So um, I think that's all I have to say right now as a general introduction to USC. I wanted to say we can take questions afterwards and we can take questions in Spanish as well. So I'm going to let Fernando talk more specifically about the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. I'm almost done, I promise. Okay, so um, just kind of to echo what Angela was saying, um, I think it's USC is an incredible place because of all the academic units. So I think there's a little over 21 of them. 21 different academic units because you can learn anything there. So like she mentioned, anything from business to communication to uh, medicine, whatever it may be. And Annenberg is one of those academic units. Um, we have 83 full-time faculty members and a lot of adjunct professors, which is really, really important and key when you're thinking about your professional career because of the fact that they are adjunct. So they're working during the day, they're working in their firm, they're working whatever it is that they do, and then they come teach you in the evening. Um, and that's important because you're learning from them firsthand and their skill set and they're teaching you that in the classroom. Um, at Annenberg, one of our unique um, facets is our student services, um, so which comprises of academic advising, um, international programs, um, and career development, um, all of which work together to really make your experience unique and very personal. Um, and all of our students, our graduate students, have from 92 to 98 percent job success rate after their first year um, upon graduation. So I think that's huge. And if you go to our web website, annenberg.usc.edu, you can download the list of employers to see where our students are working um, right after they graduate. And it's absolutely impressive. Going back to that idea of media outlets. So we have several media outlets just within our own campus and within Annenberg to help all of our students. So ATVN, which is our daily news broadcast, Annenberg TV News, um, which our students can join right in their first year. We have Annenberg Radio News. Um, we have Impact, which is more of a long form type of journalism. So kind of like 60 minutes. Um, all of these and much more provide support. There's way more for every single major. If you're interested in public relations, there's Tri-Site Communications, which is our own student run PR firm. So there's a lot and you can check them out on our website. And then a new development is that we're two buildings strong. So I showed you that picture earlier of our newsroom. That's the new Wallace Annenberg Hall, which is 88,000 square feet. Um, it has five different floors. So that, alongside with our existing building, creates a lot of space um, for our students to use. Um, just quickly to give you an overview of um, our programs, we have eight different programs and a master. Uh, we have eight different masters and PhD. So we have a PhD in communication, a master of science in digital social media. So a Master of Communication Management, a Master of Global Communication, Master of Arts in Global Communication. Um, that's actually a dual degree. 
So with the London School of Economics. So the first year you take at the London School of Economics and the second year you, you take at USC. And then we have public diplomacy, a master of public diplomacy for students that are interested in international relations. Um, and that's a, um, a partnership program with the USC School of International Relations. We have a Master of Arts in Strategic Public Relations, a Master of Science in Journalism, um, a Master of Arts in Specialized Journalism, and then a Master of Arts in Specialized Journalism, the arts. Okay, so we have several. And again, going back to that idea in the beginning of the presentation that communication is broad and you have a lot of ways that you can personalize your trajectory. And then I'm going to pass that to my colleague, Angela, who will talk about USC graduate scholarships for Mexico students. And then we'll take questions after that. Part of my job in Mexico is to work on agreements with institutions in Mexico to establish joint scholarships for Mexicans who want to study at USC. We have two agreements for the Annenberg School for Communications and Journalism. Um, the first agreement is with FUNED, the Fundación para la Educación, uh, Fundación Mexicana para la Educación. And the other is with FIDER, which is the, I, I, I can't remember its name, but it's the Banco de Mexico Administered Fideicomiso um, para el, Algo y el desarrollo humano. So, with the, these agreements, um, if you apply to one of the USC, P, uh, sorry, master's programs in, in Annenberg prior to the priority deadline, is that December 15th? December 15th, we will consider you automatically for scholarship information. We will give you a letter of admission or if we give you a letter of admission, we will give you any scholarship that we've given you and also information about how to apply to our, our partners. The agreement with FUNED um, is, a, is a collaboration. So they give a uh, high consideration to anybody who receives a scholarship from us. And we also give them extra consideration, anybody who earns the scholarship from FUNED. Um, and it works the same way with FIDER. So FUNED, Fundación Mexicana para la Educación, currently uh, awards up to $15,000 in a loan, a low interest loan. They also have an agreement with CONACIT, the Consejo Nacional de Ciencias y Tecnología. So students can win an award from Annenberg School and apply to the FUNED CONACIT joint convocatoria to get both the scholarship from CONACIT and the loan from FUNED. And many students don't want to take out a large loan, but some students will even take a little bit of a loan from FUNED just because they want to join that network of ex becarios de FUNED. It's a a good opportunity to join another group of um, successful young alumni who return to Mexico. And then you could also apply with the same letter of admission to the Banco de Mexico FIDER. Um, and they also award up to 200,000 pesos per year for tuition. And they have a much better um, rate of interest, the FIDER loan uh, will charge zero interest while you're studying, and then after a grace period, charge 2% interest. So that that's a really good loan, a very low interest loan subsidized by the Mexican government. So that's one good opportunity. The FUNED has a low interest loan as well. It's a, They're not making money, they're just trying to loan so that students can go study a master's, but they have the agreement with CONACIT. So that's why that's a really good one to apply to as well. So our agreements will give you up to 50% tuition, but really for, for a master's program, let me see. I don't want to lie on, on TV. <laughs> um, 
The agreement with Funed is for ten. Hmm. I'm going to have to check. So I'll just go through the, I'm going to check in just a minute. I'm going to go through the process one more time. You apply before December 15th for the master's program. With a letter of admission, you may be offered a, a scholarship or you may not. But we will give you the information about how to apply for our partner, with our partner, with FUNED or FIDER. And if you have a scholarship from us, you get greater consideration from them. But also if you apply to them and you win their award and you let us know afterwards that you got the FIDER or the FUNED, or they will let us know directly. They will say, Gabriel Marcos applied for our, our scholarship. Will you consider them again for uh, your award? We will consider you a second time for our award. So um, the idea is that you can go with funds from the USC, from FUNED and CONACYT, and from FIDER. And with all of that together, you can cover the whole cost of your master's degree. Part of that you do have to pay back, but at a very low interest loan. So returning to the question that Fernando posed at the beginning, if you have a clear idea of the profession that you want to go into when you graduate and where you want to work and how much you're going to earn, you can make a decision based on that, whether you want to take out the loan. But basically, with all four of these organizations together, you can completely finance the master's degree. On the other hand, the PhD degree, we have full funding, which is full tuition and living expenses um, for students that are admitted. And the living expenses are not luxurious, but they are enough to live on in Los Angeles. We also have an agreement with CONACYT if you want to apply to CONACYT as well. Both USC and CONACYT have policies against duplicating awards. So you can't get the full CONACYT and the full USC award and, we, and, and not tell either of us because we work together. But we will allow you some duplication of funds so that you can take home um, full tuition and $30,000 a year with the intention that you come back to Mexico bring your knowledge back to Mexico to be a professor or researcher in Mexico. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to check the, the numbers on the USC award and Fernando will start taking questions. Questions? Preguntas? Cool, so I don't, I don't think we have any questions, but I do want to check. En español o inglés. For anybody um, who is listening online, you can email me at Angela at usc.edu and I will send you this flyer on all of our scholarships, not just for Annenberg, but public administration, engineering, um, architecture. And for those of you here, I would like to pass this out. You want to pass that out? And I'm going to clarify. The Annenberg Master's Award for to apply to FUNED is up to $10,000. And for those who apply to FIDER, it is up to six thousand dollars so we're not going to consider you we're not going to duplicate our award for funed and fide but basically there's a good chance you can get up to ten thousand dollars and i believe the maximum award at annenberg is 50 percent tuition right now all of the awards that we give at usc are based on what's called academic merit and academic merit is the whole of your application your GPA, your grade point average from your um, bachelor's degree or licenciatura, the promedio de licenciatura, um, the, the score that you get on your GRE exam, and your statement of purpose and letters of recommendation. So they want to see a full 
uh, account of how good of a student you are and how much potential you have to excel in the field that you're applying to. And that's what they use to measure academic merit. And that's what they give the awards based on. In addition, since we have this agreement with FIDER and the agreement with FUNED, you have an extra opportunity just because you're a citizen of Mexico. It's uh, the requirement to apply for FUNED or FIDER. So you have a tremendous opportunity. The, the government of Mexico and this foundation in Mexico is supporting at a very high level master's degrees. So I hope you take advantage of it. Do you have any questions? No, no hay preguntas acerca de admisiones, mérito académico, como ser exitoso? ¿Sabes si estos préstamos eh, o becas de la Fundación y del Banco de México eh, se tienen que presentar reportes del dinero que se recibe? Porque hay otras becas donde el dinero le dicen, eh, te lo entregan y dicen sin etiquetar, no tienes que entregar ningún reporte. De FUNED y de FIDER eh, permiten el uso para cualquier cosa que sea colegiatura o manutención. Entonces, no tienes que, según yo, no tienes que reportar en qué lo gastaste. Pero sí depende de mérito académico. Tienes que tener progreso satisfactorio. Entonces, me imagino que hay algún tipo de reporte. También para tomar el préstamo, sobre todo de FUNED, sí hay un proceso de evaluación, un aval para asegurar que, que lo vayas a pagar después. Uh -huh. Y con ACIT, porque en, eh, lo que yo recomiendo, lo que están haciendo ahorita los becarios en USC, están, solic están solicitando primero a USC con la carta de admisión, van primero a con ACIT, porque con ACIT da mayor cantidad de apoyo y tienen el convenio con FUNED. Entonces puedes ganar la parte de CONACI junto con la de, lo de FUNED y es más, más dinero. Y la parte de CONACI no se tiene que pagar, pero hay que hacer el compromiso de regresar a México. Y yo creo que ellos sí piden más reporte. Pero te dan 14 mil dólares de manutención y seguro médico y... 76 mil pesos al año de colegiatura que se cobra directamente a la universidad. Entonces yo creo que pues, hay un mínimo de reportaje ahí también. Tendrías que, tendrías que sacar la parte de la universidad, la parte de CONACI, el préstamo de FUNED y el préstamo de FIDER para cubrir todos. Entonces, no es completamente beca, es beca crédito y es una combinación de instituciones. Depende en que sí cubre toda la matrícula. Yo creo que te podría quedar un poco de, de costo de, de vida, de manutención. Eh, ahorita estuvimos calculando el costo de la matrícula en, en estos programas y varía en cuanto a, a los créditos académicos. El crédito académico cuesta $1,671 dólares y lo multiplicas por el número de créditos del programa, por ejemplo, 27 o 32, yo creo que 32, y te sale 54 mil dólares sobre los dos años de colegiatura. Y necesitas 20, 22 mil dólares al año para manutención, transporte y todo. Hay mucha variedad en costo de vida también en Los Ángeles. No es muy económica el costo de vida en Los Ángeles, 
pero por ejemplo, estudiantes rentan un departamento juntos, los que comparten departamento, comparten habitación, les puede salir en 350, 400 dólares. Si quieren habitación sola, eh, salen 800 dólares. Entonces hay una gran diferencia en, en estilo de vida y costo de vida. Depende de tu visa internacional, unos, unos tipos de estudiantes pueden trabajar. So, y es posible. So, los programas, como mencioné, muchos, muchas maestrías de USC, uh, los programas son en la noche, en la tarde. So, tú puedes trabajar durante el día. Yo trabajé todo el día y luego me fui a mis clases en la noche. So, es algo que sí es posible. Um, y la universidad tiene varios trabajos para estudiantes. O puedes tú ir a Los Ángeles y trabajar en Los Ángeles, en una compañía o, o organización. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Todos van a ir a su maestría este año? <ríe> ¿O doctorado? Okay. Muy bien, pues muchas gracias por venir. Estamos a sus órdenes para preguntas. Okay.